Hello, today we're just looking at what we what we know so far on Elijah B. As we know, the police don't actually tell us much, right? And I can understand that, because whatever ever evidence they have got, they want to keep that. Silent, you know what I mean? They don't want it plastered all over the internet and on, on the papers and all that. So, here we are, there's a little boy up in my corner. So, I checked up Facebook again today and there's no updates, mm -hmm. only the one from last night. So, we're going to go through that and then we'll go through some updates on youtube little short videos news videos and then we'll go through the documents that i managed i finally managed to get downloaded yesterday where before i was going through it from off someone else's page and it's very hard to read mm -hmm. this one is off downloaded onto my page i so you can read it a bit better yourself as we go through it. So, there will be trigger warnings as we go through. Because it can be, for some people it can be very triggering. And as I say, if it gets too much, take a break. Go walk, go for a walk, go do something around your home. Make a coffee, do anything. But think of yourself first. So, right, let's get on with this because I've got another live stream later today about Audrey, but that's later. Right, uh, Right, we'll look at the Facebook, what what was said yesterday, and see what they say. Because I've just finished a live when this come on. So all I did last night was just shared it to my Twitter account. Okay, it's on there. Let's start this. A couple speakers before you. Uh, first stop will be Chief Ben Miner of the Tourist Police Department for an update on uh, search efforts over the past week. We'll also have two members of the of Elijah's family who will also speak here tonight. Some things I want to let you folks know as well. When a family comes up here to speak, they're going to be stepping off to the side once they are completed. We respectfully request that you do not film them after they are done speaking. The chief will be provided or will have about five minutes for questions after after everyone is done speaking. Um, he will not speak 
about the current situation involving Katrina Bauer and Jesse Hugh. Most of that is already in the media, and they're currently in custody in the Manitowoc County Jail. Um, when asking questions, we ask that you raise your hand and state your name and which news organization you are with. Thank you all for being here this evening. My name is Ben Miner, B-E-N-M-E-I-N-N-E-R-T. I'm the chief of the Two Rivers Police Department. A child missing for any amount of time is everyone's worst nightmare. That's why we're here today. Elijah, a three-year-old boy, has been missing now for a week today. For the past week, we've utilized hundreds of resources worked around the clock in our attempts to bring Elijah home. Right now, I'd like to bring everybody just up to speed with our search for Elijah and how that went. Elijah was recorded a week ago today, like I said, around 11 a.m. in the 3900 block of Michigan here in Two Rivers. Everyone searched for Elijah on that day. And I mean everyone. Our police department first responders responded out. It's not necessarily an unusual incident to have a missing child. Usually we find them right away. Nearly immediately we realized that we needed more resources. Every officer, including myself, was out searching that day for Elijah. When we needed more help, we reached out to the fire department and our department of public works. Soon after that, we got some information stating that Elijah may have gone missing at 8 a.m. When we received that information, my assistant chief, Melissa Wiesner, she's a former lead investigator and she's worked many child cases. I entrusted her and I knew she had the wherewithal to reach out immediately to places like Our Child is Missing, our National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, she put out numerous alerts, including missing and endangered alerts, ring neighborhood alert, uh, alerts, and local emergency alerts. That included an Amber Alert. I know there's been some question about an Amber Alert on that day and why. This child was three years old and was reported missing on a cold winter temperature day with only a blanket and possibly light clothing. And we knew at that time possibly three to four hours. I just find that as a danger. I immediately reached out with the assistance of my staff to the Division of Criminal Investigation. This is not about me, this has always been about bringing Elijah home and quickly. They led that investigation into his whereabouts with the support of our FBI. We also utilized Almost any boat, UTV, drone, canine, and even National Guard helicopters to search for Elijah. Unfortunately, Elijah wasn't found. Following that day, we had a press conference. I know people were frustrated with that. I too was frustrated with that. Um, we had a lot of misinformation going around on Facebook and social media. And just in general, we felt it necessary that we had to lay out factual information in the case and bring everybody up to date to that point. We also established a tip line. We got that up to the public at that time. That has been beneficial and crucial to this investigation and search. Since the conference, I have personally provided media releases daily, if not multiple times during the day, to bring our public up to date and remain transparent. Those leads, those investigations, everything we've taken as tips have led to searching our neighborhoods, searching all our waterways, areas with foot canvases, both urban and rural, throughout Manitowoc County and even beyond. We've searched Wisconsin landfills and quarries, 
and we've even had additional leads in Wisconsin Dells. In addition to all those search efforts, I am aware of other investigations taking place. I can confirm Eliza's mother, Katrina Bauer, uh, Bauer is in jail on charges of child neglect and obstructing. Katrina's boyfriend, Jesse Bang, is in jail on charges of child neglect. And I do know that Eliza's father has also been incarcerated at Oshkosh Correctional Institute in unrelated matters since 2023. I also understand that the public would like more information on those first two individuals I mentioned. However, I'm unable to discuss those matters because it is an ongoing investigation and I don't want to jeopardize those cases. I want to thank the various local, state, federal agencies, as well as all our fire and EMS and even those private uh, resources that have helped along the way. Thank you to everyone in the community. They provided food and drinks towards all these efforts. And thanks to all those private search efforts. On Saturday, we announced a Crime Stoppers Award of $1,000 for information leading to the location of Elijah and have since provided other ways that people can donate here in the community or abroad. Currently, we have those established as coming to our customer service here at City Hall, our police department, and I'm also working on establishing an online realm for people to do so. When that becomes available, I will reach out to everybody and let you know. Today, the FBI has now provided an additional reward up to $15,000 for information leading to the location and return of Elijah Boo and or the arrest and conviction of any individual or individuals responsible or involved with his disappearance. We have posters here that state just that. In addition to all those search efforts, Elijah Boo's family has been coordinating their own search efforts throughout Manitowoc County. They're here today and they'd like to provide a statement. I'd like to bring those members of Elijah's family out to make those statements for you. On behalf of my family, we stand before you today with heavy hearts, burdened by an unimaginable situation. The pain is indescribable. A ton of no family or child should ever see. We cannot express the grief of our sorrows. Ignore the desperation that comes through us. As each moment passes without news of Elijah's safety, to anyone who may have information about Elijah's whereabouts, we plead with you to please come forward. Your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold a key to Elijah's safe return. Every piece of information will, bring, will help bring us one step closer to bring Elijah back, back to our family where he belongs. To those who may have information, your assistance is just not a contribution, but a lifeline of hope. Elijah is a joyful and curious boy, full of life and love. He is a precious child who deserves every chance of happiness. And his absence is deeply felt by all who know and love him. Every day without him feels like a piece of our hearts is missing. We long to hear his laughter, to witness his curiosity, and to feel the warmth of his embrace. The emptiness left in his absence is a void that cannot be filled by anything else. Elijah, if you can hear us, know that you are deeply missed and loved, and we will not rest until you are safely back in our arms. Lastly, 
we want to express our deepest gratitude to law enforcement, government agencies, and all involved in the search operation. The support of the community, the dedication of the volunteers, the generosity of businesses, and the kindness showing through food and monetary donations, and so much more. We thank each and every one of you for your role in our search for Elijah. Please keep Elijah in your thoughts and prayers. And if you have any information, please come forward. We believe that with the help of the community, we can bring Elijah back home together. Thank you. Um, I uh, talk in English is not good. So um, I want everybody to be patient with me. So and I just try that I can. So I know I would like to thank you for everybody to help my family to search for my grandson whole week to today. So everybody know that we are really good. So and I really, I want to thank you for the officer, for all the fire department people, all the people living in two cities here, how us to search for our grandson, our baby for one week right now. So I uh, really thank you for everybody so far right now. So I want everybody to uh, continue to help us to look for my grandson. I want my grandson to be home with my family. So I want everybody to continue. Don't stop. Just searching for my baby Elisha. We want him to be safe and with my family and we love my grandson. Thank you, buddy. Thank the Drew family for being here. I have time for some questions as the sheriff announced earlier. I won't be able to talk about the investigation of the case, but I will answer whatever questions I can. Chief Emily Matesic from Fox 11. When was the last time someone other than Jesse Bang saw Elijah? What was the last time he was seen by someone other than someone who's arrested in the case? Right, we've gotten that question a lot. Um, I appreciate that question. What I will say is, uh, the reason that we've been seeking out to the public to request all the information that we are is because we are following up on every lead, tip, et cetera, and that is one of those things. You know, we want to know every time, any time that Elijah was seen during the past week. So we will continue to follow up on all leads, any leads, and that's what's leading us into the locations that we've been. Just, what was the most recent, I uh, guess, before he disappeared? I can't comment directly on the investigation, but I can tell you that we're following up on all those, and we continue to ask for those. Chief, Chief Bria Jones, Fox 6. Have see. you all Hang received... On, just a second. Read Bria question. Jones, Fox 6, Milwaukee. Have you all received any information that indicates that Elijah is still alive, or that that be any surveillance or ring camera? I'm not going to speculate on anything at this point, but what I will say is all our efforts are for bringing home Elijah safe. I believe that all our efforts thus far have done just that. We've reached out to hundreds and hundreds of resources over this week's time span, and they're all dedicated to bringing him home, and we'll continue to follow up on any leads to do so. Chief Kendall Keith, WISN 12, do police believe Elijah left that residence on his own? Again, I can't speculate. I will say that, again, when we're talking about the Amber Alert that we put out, People wanted me to speculate on an abduction versus an endangered. At this point, what I do know is a child was missing in cold temperatures, you know, winter temperatures in relatively little clothing and possibly a blanket. And that's what we're searching for, and we'll continue to search for until I get some answers. I know you asked for surveillance video. Has there been any video that shows him on his own walking, anything like that? I can't comment directly on that. What I will say is if that is in fact the case, 
I know that we have DCI agents, FBI agents, and local police doing just that because we're following up on all tips, any tips that relate to Elijah Booth and his his uh, return. Chief Carrie of Post Alapos, NBC 26, you mentioned that there are search efforts in other parts of the state. Can you speak to what those have included? You mentioned here we've been searching landfills and waterways. You said that there have been searches going on in Wisconsin Dells. What have those looked like? Well, I think what I can tell you is that you've seen and you guys have been broadcasting on searches of landfills, searches of our waterways. We know that people have been out in the Dells. Those are all things that we're following up on leads on. Any lead, we'll leave no rock unturned. We're going to follow up on those leads because ultimately our goal is again, we want to bring Elijah home. So it doesn't matter how small that lead or tip may be, please bring that to us. Contact our tip line because we will get people out there to follow up on any lead, any lead whatsoever. I think what we're going to go back over here because he was asking earlier. Uh, you had spoke about misinformation or how does the misinformation spread specifically in this case on Facebook hinder this specific uh, investigation and then and just an investigation in general? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The misinformation on Facebook, how does that hinder an investigation, this one specifically and just in general? That in particular doesn't necessarily hinder the investigation. What it does is it hinders all the efforts within the community because again, our primary efforts here are to bring Elijah home safe. And if the public's getting misinformation, that's going to lead them awry. I want them to know the facts. Our department takes pride in remaining transparent here in Two Rivers. And that's why I'm putting out all these news releases. That's why I'm having a news conference with you today is because I want the public to know the facts, just the facts, and be up to date with those facts. So they can continue their own searches. We're appreciative of those. I'm also appreciative of all the resources that we're focusing on throughout Manitowoc and beyond. Chief, can you talk about the toll this has taken on your I'm department? I'm sorry, can we, can we take another question over here? Uh, I'd Samantha, like to spread this around. Samantha Cavalli, WBAY News. Um, have you been able to find any item that Elijah was last wearing? We have video of people collecting evidence potentially might be that dinosaur shoe that was missing. Right, I, I can't comment on exactly what has been taken or would not be taken. Um, I don't know the investigation uh, issues there as far as how that plays out. What I do know is that we're continuing to search for any of those items that you're talking about. So basically, you guys have all seen the photo of Elijah. We've mentioned that he may have had dinosaur print shoes, a red flag bank blanket, and in the clothing description. We are still looking for anybody that has tips on any of that stuff because we will follow up on it and we will try to, to figure out if it is related to Elijah. Where do you go from here? Is there still? I'm sorry, can we go here? Last question. Yeah, Chief Miner, I'll see what's up from local line. Um, well, when you get through done, it seems uh, how confident are you that Elijah is still alive? Again, I'm not going to speculate. What I'm going to do is continue to search for Elijah Booth. We are doing everything in our efforts, believing that he is still out there. We will find him and we will bring him home. That's what we're searching for. And really, anybody in the community, anybody, anybody beyond, this is not related to just two rivers. This is abroad. So even outside of the Two Rivers community, I ask everybody in the state and beyond, really just start looking at your property. That's what you can do as, as a person, not right here physically. If you're looking for something to do, first check your property, then get involved in some of these other search efforts. That would help us a great deal. And again, reach out to that tip line, come back to us and provide us with any tips and we will follow up on them. Do investigators have a reason to believe at this point that there's anyone else involved in this disappearance? <clears throat> I'm sorry. That, that was the last question. I will just close with, um, I'd like to thank you everyone for being here today. You've heard pleas from the family now. Um, we echo those same pleas. Since our number one, our priority has always been, I keep repeating it, to bring Elijah home. I'm asking everyone to continue in their searches, continue to contact our tip line, um, report anything, anything at all that you feel may help us bring Elijah home. Everyone has been, has been affected by this deal, uh, this incident a great deal. Uh, um, this is a close-knit Two Rivers community. We're, we're all devastated. We want answers. You want answers. Um, I know efforts of our city staff, our citizens, and those beyond our city, city limits are going to continue to work together and we'll bring Elijah home. Thank you.
So that is the end of our press conference. Um, again, we're making that plea out to the public. Everybody's seen that kid in the logo. It's pulling at everybody's heart strings. We need to find them. Somebody knows something. Just want to remind everyone, tip line, uh, state tip line, we've received hundreds and hundreds of tips that DCI agents are following up on, FBI agents are following up on, and local law enforcement. That tip line is 844-267-6648. And as a reminder again, as the Chief reiterated, there's a $1,000 reward out from our local Crime Stoppers for information leading to the discovery of Elijah. And now the FBI has stepped up their ball game, which we have posters set up by them, $15,000 reward for anyone that has information leading to his recovery and, and or um, arrest and prosecution of anyone responsible for his disappearance. Again, thank you all for helping share our message help today. $15,000. That's a lot of money for people. I wonder if that would bring anyone out the woodwork. Someone must have seen something. They must have, because there's no way that little boy walked out of that apartment on his own. He stated himself he locked the door. He bolted it. And he put a chain on it. And the chain is near the top of the door. A three-year-old is not going to reach a chain near the top of the door. Not going to. But then, he says, uh, but I did have a couple of beers and I did take a, a sleeping med, some sleeping medication. But, the night before, but you got up okay at 7.30 to take your son to the bus stop. You come home and you had some breakfast. You know what I mean? So he wasn't out of it to the point where you, he did not forget to lock that door. He wasn't. And when you're caring for a child, you don't go to sleep. You don't. You don't go to sleep until they go to sleep. And when they wake up, you're awake. You don't go to sleep. I don't care how tired you are, if you're tired and you need to rest and you've got a young child, find someone responsible, like a family member, to come over and look after him while you have your little sleep. I don't care how many locks you've got on a flipping door, you don't leave a three-year-old while you're asleep, unattended. That three-year-old could have got into anything. Anything. He could have got into the cupboards. He said himself, he was always uh, getting into things. How do we know, not know that, while he was sleeping, that little boy's gone off around the flat and got done mm. something and got hurt, didn't you? He's asleep, he wouldn't know. That little boy's probably passed away and he's fast asleep. We don't know that what happened. It's all conjecture, conjecture, whatever, factual. It's, it's only what we're making up from what we're hearing. Because the police aren't talking and because we don't know if the mother and that and what they call the boyfriend is talking. We don't know. So, but at the moment, the maximum Eva are looking at, she's looking at about three years, nine months, maximum. And he's looking at about three years. That's nothing to him. Three years is a walk in the park for him. Anyway.
เฮ้ยยกนะครับมองยาหรือจะมีกลับของยาเช่นเกิดวิจัยเอ่อลักษณะลูกว่าวิกาดิสวิกาดิสอ n d he Nice. Well, we've got this. It's a timeline of Elijah who's disappearing. Okay? Take with it as you see. If you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, you don't. Right. This was published in February the 27th, which was... Hang on. It's now... Now the twenty eighth. So it's published yesterday. Right. Can right. Let's just say yes. So right. We start. Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Right. As search efforts continue for three-year-old Elijah Boo, we now have a better idea of what happened in the days leading up to Elijah's. Disappearing, disappearing. Hmm, we do. Mm. The timeline of events is detailed from the criminal complaint, which we will look at afterwards. Fog against Elijah's mother, Katrina Ball, and her boyfriend, Jesse Brown. He's the one who's recorded, who reported Elijah missing a week ago. In November of 2023, Now we're going right back to November, last year. Around Thanksgiving, Bella, Bella told her boyfriend about Elijah's behaviour. Bang told Bella she needed to try harder to stop the behaviour. Bella tells Bang she wants him to teach the three-year-old how to be a man. He's three years old. What about teaching him how to be a child. Monday, February the 12th, Bella meets up with Fang in Fang Dulac to drop Elijah off with him for disciplinary reasons, yeah? Bella meets up with Fang in Fang Dulac to drop Elijah off with him for disciplinary reasons. Oh my lord. She's the mother. He doesn't need discipline. He needs structure. He needs to know. Yes, all children should know the rights and wrongs. Right? But there's ways of going about that. According to the criminal complaints, According to the criminal, criminal complaint, the tactics include. Uh, I'm going to put my trigger warning up. Where is it? Where is it? Right? Because this is very. It, it got to me, put it that way. And I'm going to put it up. Yeah, I'll take his little photo down and put that up there. According to the criminal complaint, the tactics include making Elijah stand for one to three hours at a time without sitting, while praying or repeating the phrase, I'm sorry, mummy. If Elijah failed, Vang threatened him with cold water. Like I said, I if I was one of the police officers and I read this and I was doing the interview, the interrogation, I would make him stand in the corner for the whole time we was interrogating him 
And if he wanted to sit down, I'd say, well, if you sit down, we take you to, we've got a place you can sit down, but you get, you'll get the hose on you, and it'll be cold water. That's what I would do. Making stand for the whole of the interrogation time. Do not put a chair in there for you. Making stand. Barra and Frank agreed upon. Barra and Frank agreed upon what tactics should be used. But other, other than that, it was up to Frank as he is the enforcer of rules in the relationship. So does he does he tell her what to do as well then? I bet he did. I bet he was telling her what she could do and what she couldn't do. While gathering cell phone data, authorities say, say Barra lied to them about her whereabouts twice that week while Elijah was with Bang in two rivers. Hmm. Why lie? If you haven't done anything wrong, why lie? Your phone data will give you away. It pings. Ping, 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 ping. Tells them exactly where you are, exactly where you be, what time, and everything. Right? It didn't give an exact location like you was at this flat or you was here. It'll tell them what area you was in. Because the towers, the cell phone towers, it'll ping. You know what I mean? Barra, Wednesday the 14th. Wednesday the 14th. Barra eventually told investigators she was in two rivers for a period of time before going back to Wisconsin Downs. Now, I've got my maps pulled up, so I might actually, I wrote it down so I can't forget because I've got a memory like a seat. Right, and we'll map it the quickest way from there to hers in Wisconsin down. And let's see if there's anywhere they could have left a baby. So it's Wisconsin down as well. Right. Okay, so we're going to map that after this, right? She, well, Friday the 16th of February, she tells authorities she visited Frank and Elijah on Friday night. She says she saw Elijah on the couch, but he was tired. Well, he'd probably been standing up all day for punishment, time out. <coughs> he gave up you check. Think of checking his nappy? No, I bet you didn't. But tired. Barrett left early Saturday morning, February 17th, to go back to Wisconsin Downs. Monday, February 19th. That night, Fan says he was punishing Elijah for making him stand near him. By making him stand near him. Yeah, so probably he could give him a slap and whatever if he did anything, if he moved an inch. While Van watched a movie, Van says he had three beers and took a sleeping aid. You don't do that when you've got no children. I'm sorry, you don't. I'm on medication. I have to take my medication. Right? I don't like to because I do. Right? But I take mine at 10 o'clock. But even when, during the week, I have a better sleep. I get a better sleep, so it wears off better by the time I'm up. But on the weekends, when I have my grandkids, I'm up at like 7, 8 o'clock, and I'm drowsy, but I'm awake. I'm alert. I know exactly what they're doing. I get up. I do their breakfast. You know what I mean? I get them washed. I get them bathed. Like my grandson loves his bath, so I get his bath ready for him. And all that. I'm alert. I know what's going on. Frank 
Tuesday, February the 20th. Now this is the important. Frank got up at 7.30 in the morning to get his teen son up for school and on the bus. Frank says Elijah was sleeping on the sofa in the living room. After Frank, after Frank's son got on the bus, Frank said he went back into the apartment and locked the door knob, dead bolted it and put a security chain on to keep Elijah from walking out of the apartment. Fair enough, I'll do that here. I've only got like a deadbolt, like I'm my door, right? And a chain. I have to put the chain on because my grandson is six, can get, can open the deadbolt. It's low enough for him to reach as well. But I put the chain on, he can't get the chain off. I have trouble sometimes getting the flipping chain off. Frank says, Frank says he woke Elijah up at 8 a.m. They had breakfast, and then went into Frank's bedroom and he shut the door. Frank tells authorities Elijah was still in a time out. Still in a time out from the night before. So Elijah stood near the foot of Frank's bed and prayed. Frank said he fell asleep and when he woke up, Elijah was gone. Rang, Frank called 911 at 10 am to report Elijah missing. At 3 pm on Tuesday, state, official, state official, officials issued an amber alert for Elijah Booth. It remains active. According to a new poster created by FBI, a reward of up to 15,000 is being offered for information leading to Elijah's safe. Return. Right. And that's what we got on that. That's what we got on that. Right. Let's go to the maps. Oh, cool. Just my head deep. Right, share this tab. Uh, please we like joking. Oh god. Oh, yeah, I've got to reload it. She might go wrong, so I've got to reload it. What's that one? No, you don't need that one. All right. Google Maps. Oh. oh, come on. Let's get that one. But we share this tab now. The other day, I had this open. I went on to it and I was live. And I hadn't typed in where I wanted first before going live. And it showed where I lived. And I thought, oh no, that office. So I'm quickly typing to get off that part of the map because I don't want anyone knowing where I live. I live in the UK and that's all I need to know. Anyway, this is two rivers, mainly because it's got the name, because it's got the two rivers coming through and joining up and going out into the, what river is it? Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan. 
it's like Michigan. You got Wisconsin one side, Michigan the other. So, oh God's sake. Anyway, where are we? I'm down here. Where are we? Two rivers. Oh, let's punch it again. Right. So, I'm pointing it off. Everywhere I'm pointing my mouse, something clicks up. So, this is two rivers. And as you can see, it's very windy, these rivers. Lots of bends. Lots of areas where a body could be caught up on. Right, shallow parks, sand banks. It's very windy. And I would have thought if a body had been put in that river, it would have shown up by now. Because it's been a week. We looked at this here in Shoto. We looked here. Right, let's take it down to there. Let's get my little man. Right, where are we? Give me set up there. Yeah, it's a bitch. And is this the right way we're going? No, we've got to go the other way. Okay. So, as you can see, there's a wheel. Mm, come back up. Okay, we're going. No. <laughs> we want to go that way. Okay, let's just turn a bit so we can go that way. And as you can see, there's a wheel. Uh, and I know one gentleman had been searching that part of the river because he lives around that way. You know what I mean? That is. I think it was this gentleman living in this house, I don't know, walking along this river, because there's little, you know what I mean, there's little drain hole things, so they've had to search all these, all right, and then the sandbanks and whatever, and there's so much uh, a body could get caught up on, look, if he got put in there, he got to come down here. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He's got to get past this, where the branches in the water, and then he could have got... Who's saying the body, a body will go that way? It wouldn't, it goes... A, you don't know which way a body will go when it's going down the river. Right? So, we got that. And I'm going to get back up here. Right, let's come back. So, we've done that. We did that the other day as well. And we went down the river. Right? It's like here. Please have had to search all these areas. And I know they were searching. But you see what I mean? There's, there's all these banks here. Right? All these banks. 
where Bundy could get caught up on. I know a fair bit about rivers because we have a few cases of bodies being found in rivers in the UK, especially lately. Yeah. Right. There's a woman there. Right. The police were around there the other day. Last week sometime. Right. So we know they were searching around there. And all round here. But what I want to know is, is there any cameras on this road? Let's have a look, shall we? Because if he went along this road, right? Yeah, we're going, I think we're going along the way. We should be going. Yes, we are. If he came along this road, Let's just see what properties there is that may have camera on them. Uh, any car cameras, you know what I mean, passing them. But look how quiet it is around here. Look. This little pull in here. So quiet, and there's a little pull in here that takes you down to the river. Quite hidden from the main road. So unless you was a car coming past when those coming out, would you have seen it? I don't know. It all depends what time if they, was, if they ever did do that. But look at this. Marshland, rivers, I don't know if that's marshland. But that's all had to be searched. Anyway, let's carry on up the road. Because this, if he did put him in the river and you put him in the river up, up here, this is the road that will come along. Now, as you can see, I can't see any cameras along this road. <coughs> <coughs> And I know in the UK, <laughs> they would have cameras everywhere. You can't go nowhere in the UK on the road, unless it's a side road. They've got cameras on all these sort of roads. But it doesn't look like that in here. But look. Woodland. You know what I mean? All that. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> What's this place? What's this place? No, don't let you go down there. Okay. But look at all the open land. This has to be all searched because it, that's quite tall grass. So a child could be lying, be lying in there. And unless it's searched by foot, you're not going to find him by a helicopter. Maybe a drone could fly over there with a heat signal or one of those that can pick up colours. Maybe. Out of property, isn't it? Yeah, because of the. See, there's this house here. Yeah, no, I'm not out to dox anyone. But would they have cameras on their house? I don't know. Looks like there's a church here. Would they have cameras on their house? On the building, I mean. What I mean? It's the cameras on these houses, on these buildings. 
I got got any cameras for any from anywhere. Seeing out in the UK, I'm not joking. Right. There, these. Believe me, they will have a camera on one of them on a road like this in the UK. You cannot go anywhere in the UK without being caught on camera. Unless you're on side roads like country lands, you cannot go anywhere. And this to us is like a main road. Not this place here. I mean, it looks like a house yet. Yeah, it's a property. Have they got any door cam? cam? So all these properties I've had to go to, the FBI, the police, everyone, has had to go to these properties. And ask them, did they see anything? Did they see any cars? Look at this cute little house here. Right? Right. That to me is cute. That's quaint. Oh God. I'm always doing that dropping in the mouse. Well, that won't grab when it won't work. Right. I love old buildings like this. Anyway. But did, have they got any footage, cameras? So we'll carry on along this road. Look. What's this to this side? You know what I mean? Let's just go up a bit further to see if we can see better. All oh, this needs to be searched. And if it hasn't, I want to know why. Right? You've got the manpower, you've got volunteers who are out there looking. So, and then you've got all this land here. I'm going to go back again. Look, all this. Oh, and it's long grass sort of thing. Whatever is grown there, I don't know. It needs to be searched. So you've got another road there that will probably take you towards the river somewhere. But look at all the open land. Houses, these houses here, have they got any camera on their houses? Any cameras anywhere? Doorbell cameras? A lot of people have doorbell cameras now on their houses and I've got one where it's not active 24-7. It only activates when they ring my doorbell. So my neighbours, because I live in a, a flat, a block, a flat, my neighbours can't say I'm spying on them because I'm not. It only activates when they hit the doorbell. And only then will it actually activate if I answer it. It shows me who's at the door but it doesn't record it until I answer it. You know what I mean? Look, houses, open land. Look at this open land. So much open land. It's quite a long road, but I suppose in a car it isn't. I can't believe how much open land it is. And you're telling me this has all been searched? No, it hasn't. Too much to have all been searched. I think they need to widen their search areas now. Because there's no ways in the town itself, in the town. 
you know why if it's going to be anywhere it's going to be in the river or out in these woods or filled somewhere i'd be asking people to check their lands as there only been any land being dug over recently I've I don't notice any land of theirs that have been disturbed. Have they got any old outbuildings they don't use no more? It all needs to be looked and they <coughs> Personally, if it was me, I'd be walking through these fields. I'd have my map and I'd go one or two fields each day, whatever I'm in fields I could walk through in a day, I would do it. And I'd cross it off on my map where I've been. Because this is just so much open land. So many buildings, so many outbuild, out, out buildings, rivers. Somewhere along here, someone must have cameras on their properties, you know what I mean? Because some of these have got big buildings and... Right, what's this place over here? Surely there's cameras on this building. I don't know what it is, but... Right. These buildings here, cameras. That car following me. <coughs> no, I've got. <coughs> I've just got to go up on the big map to see where I'm going. <coughs> <clears throat> but this just But all along here, I need certain, and as you can see on the maps, it's big areas of open field. You know what I mean? And where he lived. Was, was this he? Oh, no, I'll just go uh, 3918. 3918. This is that rock. That's it. Mom. Right, so 3918. We'll go down here. Well, hold on, before we go anywhere, we'll, let's just zoom out. Zoom out just a little bit so we can see where we are. See? Go up there, straight along that road where we've just come from. Around here, that was where the marshy land was. That's where the, uh, like the boat ramp thing is. And that's the like reservoir. Okay, so it's straight along that road, straight down here to Walla. Right, there's the cemetery. These houses down here. No, a bit further down. A bit further down. There we are. And that's where he lived. So it wouldn't take him long in a car to get from there to the river. Even if... Right, let's have a look. 
even if he went this way to the river. Look. Right? Where's that? That wouldn't take long to get from here to there. You know, is that a bridge? 45th Street. Let's have a look. Okay. Let's get my little man. Keep walking there. Right, now we're going to go along. I think we're going the right way, are we going the right way? No, we're not. No, we're not, we're going the wrong way. So we need to go this way. Right? Look. Here's another bridge. Right. There's the other bridge. I'm trying to get down there, but for some reason it seemed too close in. It's not going to go there, but okay. There it is. Right, let's just give it a twist, twist. Right. Is that bridge I was telling you about? Right. Look this, look all this round here. All these sort of things that a body, a body could get caught up on. You know what I mean? So, was he, did they put him in the, has he been put in the river? I wouldn't say did that, I'll say has he been put in the river? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the river flows that way, I believe, because of that reservoir, the water coming down. So the river will be flowing that way. In which case... Right. Oh, no, yeah, this is the Ever River, isn't it? The East... So... Yeah, yeah, it flowed the other way, sorry. It would be flowing for that way, sorry, yeah. Because it goes out to the big river. But there's still so many hang-ups on these rivers, too many twists, too many... Some, some parts where it goes narrow, some parts where it goes wide. Is it a fast-moving river? They have to take all them things into consideration. And I would have thought by now, after a week, if a body was placed in that river, it would have shown up, unless it's tied down to a boulder or a rock or something like that. That will keep the body down below the water. But then... Right. But look, he only had to go up there and he could have gone that way. That's closer to the bridge, to a bridge, than that way. But he said, look, if he went that way, look at all this open land. And then you've got all these little rivers here. Right, which will be found. A body will be picked up in these little things very easily. So I think he's gone into this river, and if he's managed to get down here, then we're going to need all the prayers we can get to be able to find that little boy. 
because we need the big, we need the boats that can go and sonar, hit the sonar, the base of the river, and sonars to the side. We need those boats going up and down that river continuously. Because it is, it is it's not, it doesn't go in, into the ocean, does it? No, it doesn't go into the ocean. Uh, just a big lake. But oh my god, if you got down to that lake, you need the boats, the specialist people with their boats and their sonar equipment to go up and down that lake. But how do we know he wasn't took over here somewhere? To like, what's that? Like who are? You know what I mean? And nothing even big one then because the buggy could be anywhere. If he's managed to get over to there, is there a bridge or anything? Well, two rivers is there. If he managed to get up here, yeah. You know, would he get? It's a long drive to get over that way, and I can't see any bridges. So I don't think he could go over there. It's gonna be either. Oh, two. Look at that lake. Look at this flipping lake here. Yeah. Lake Winnebago. Has that been searched from the drug so far? Has it? You know what I mean? So yes, we've been looking at these rivers going into two rivers, but Who's saying he didn't go over here? Who's saying he didn't drive over here? Or that whoever it is has, hasn't drove over there? My cat's all annoying me. They keep climbing up on me. I have to keep moving everything. I feel so sorry. I feel so bad for the, the family. Right, you seen the grandmother in that police report. Right? Put the police release. Press release. She was heart she's heartbroken. The family are heartbroken because they I think deep down they know unless they've sold this boy to someone, right? He's not coming back. And I had to say that, but it's now been a week this little boy went missing and nothing has been found. Not the blanket. The only thing that's been found, and I've actually got the picture of it somewhere. Oh, God, where did I put the pictures? Oh, God, I can't remember now. Oh. Let's see if I can find the pictures. Oh, right. How do I get my pictures up? <laughs> I can't find them. The only thing I know they found is a little pump, which is very similar to the one he was said to be wearing. And they did find some other items, but they may not be anything to do with him. Might not be anything to do with it either. But for them to arrest the, the mother and her acquaintance, boyfriend, whatever, 
the same day or next day in the morning. Bit of a coincidence. The mother knows more than what she said. She has lied to the police on several occasions about where she was that week. And I said, because it was saying that he was took there on the on the Tuesday. People was all saying that the mother took him there on the Tuesday. He hadn't been took there on the Tuesday. He'd been took there the week before. So it just makes me sick N knowing what she knew about this guy and she let her boy go there to be a man. He's a child. He was he's three years old. He's got years and years and years to be a man. And they learn that as they get older. Right? They make their own mounds up when they say, Oh right, I'm fourteen, I'm the big man. Okay. I'll still knock you out though. You know what I mean? When they come lippy with you. That's when they try to be the man, the big man. When they start being lippy with you, that's when your child is got starting to be trying to be the big man. Thinking, yep, carry on. I'll knock your lips off your face. <laughs> but a man at three years old, come on. Yes, you teach them right from wrong. But like I said, and I've said it many times, there are ways to do that. You do not make a three-year-old stand for three hours. And if he starts to we waver, he gets threatened with cold water. I wonder why he treats, treats his own son. That makes me wonder. How, <sighs> did he, how does he, or did he treat his own son? His own, own son was a teenager. The lippy time when they start being, I'm the big man, teenager. So I wonder how he treated his own son. Did he treat his own son this way? Or was his own son so scared of him that he, he'd learnt over the years, don't backchat your father. Do as he says, when he says it, go where he says everything. You know what I mean? You eat your dinner now, okay, I'll eat my dinner. You go back now, okay, I'm going back, I'm going back. You know what I mean? Had he terrorised his own son that bad, where his own son was scared of him? I'd like to know. Because what makes him huh, think he can teach a three-year-old how to be a man? A man does not do what he did. A man would not do that. So that's not teaching a child how to be a man. It's teaching a child how not to be a man. Because if you're a man, and this is how you treat a child, I don't want to be like you. You know what I mean? So, it's disheartening. Anyway, what is nothing on the bottom? Right, we've seen that one. That can go. Right. I'm now going to pull up the documents that I managed to download. Oh yes, I found the app. I found the place where you go to get all these documents. <clears throat> right. Uh, where is he? I've got my Googles. One. Right, this is the mother's. Right, this is Katrina Barra. Okay, and what I'm going to do so that it goes even bigger on the screen for you, 
I will go here. I'll go to D. Okay. Right. Katrina B. Barra. Wisconsin. Oh, no, no, no. Before we go anywhere, I want to map out the distance. Do not want to map out the distance for one. Three nine one and one two directions. Get directions two. Right. Two start. No starting point is this. This one. This one. That's the starting point. Um, and we can get to this because we're going to Wisconsin Dallas. I don't oh I should have a just now Hang on. Let's see. Now we're going by car, so I can. Leave now. There's this constant downs. So let's just cut some down. So I'm trying to get it to go for me. Yes, it's spelled correctly. Oh, let's see if I can get her full address up. Right. W R E. Yeah, that's the right one. So, go oh, driving. Show me. Right, let's do this. For some reason, it won't, it shows me where Wisconsin Dallas is, but it doesn't give me the driving distance. Let's try. Let's. All right. And then uh, 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 and here we go, Wisconsin. I think I spell it right, doesn't it? Uh, right, leave now. Leave now. It will take the uh, fastest route now due to traffic 2 hours 59 minutes if she's leaving now. 39 minutes, sorry. Or and that's going from there all the way down there. And look what we go past. Look what we're going past here. 
Давай. Сюда. О, давай, сюда. Тим, а что ты не умеешь? Он тем пить его мне. Мой. Давай. Нет. You don't almost keep it in. So it takes two hours, 39 minutes. Two hours, 31 minutes without traffic. And that's using the trunk, whatever they call it. Okay? The main highway. But... As, this, as I said, we're going past... No. We want to take our little man down here, don't we? Right? We're going past. All these buildings, somewhere on there, they're going to have cameras. They're going to. I've known people. Church, like building over the back of other buildings have cameras and they've caught the car going past on their camera. If the camera's high enough and can go past certain buildings, they will catch them. So... But that's the route she will take. That's the more direct route. It's taking you along this river edge. Along here. Right. And along here, up by this lake. Oshkosh. Right. Now, I, that name reminds me when my little boy was a baby. My, his aunt at the time, she used to buy him Oshkosh clothing. Because she didn't know her sister, since she went to America a lot of time. And she used to buy him Oshkosh. And no one else had Oshkosh. Oshkosh was not another thing in the UK then. And that was, what, 32 years ago, 33. It was two hours from there to there. It's two hours, 39. So from there to there, you know what I mean? Well, oh, that's what they're saying, two so hours, you know what I mean, it's for the whole, no. okay. Continue straight to stay on US 151. Continue straight to stay, stay on Wisconsin 23, W, w Wisconsin 23, Trump. Not in. Look at all this open space here. How do we know something didn't... I don't think something happened on the 20th. I think something happened before the 20th. Don't know what date, but definitely before the 20th. Because she was at his on the 14th. She was in two rivers on the 15th, 16th, on the 16th, 17th. Something happened right back then. And it was only on the 20th they decided to phone. The police. So I don't think nothing happened on the twentieth. I really don't. Yeah, he's more close up. So he has to go past Shoto. We showed you that on the map. He had to go 
or she has to go past there to get home or to get to his. What's that? Is that a road or I've never read that? See all these little rivers? They need to be searched. They need to broaden their distance. I know it's a big area to search, but it needs to be done. Because if she was going back and forth from his, from there to there, from there to there, who says she didn't, she hasn't got rid of the body? But all we know is they've been with her. We don't know that. Well, we would do because we'd have his phone details. But, no. I'm sorry, it's too much of a coincidence that she has to go past. Shoto. That would be my area of interest right there. All around there. Now, so let's see if I can do a distance thing. Uh, two miles. So it would take two days to walk it. 13 hours by bicycle. You know what I mean? Two days to walk it. But if you're desperate, you walk it. Um... And that just keeps coming back into my head so turn. But you can see from his eyes how direct it is to show to. You know what I mean? Let's have a look again. We'll go on the map though. All right, we'll take our little man down. Come on, little man. We're going for a little walk. Yeah. All right. Now we'll try with facing. Uh, are we going the right way? Right, we need to go. So, yeah, let's go along that way. Are we going along this way? No, we're going the wrong way. We're going the wrong way. We need to go back down here. <laughs> right. We need to get across that river that we see it this way. And there's the river I told you about, where we went to before. There's the weir. Hmm. Now perhaps people can understand why the police were looking around this area. Because to get to hers, you've got to go over there. Right? I don't know if you could go this way. Let's have a look. Let's get rid of this. Go on. Let's get rid of that a minute. Right. So, go past the two rivers fire department, right? But, can you go this way to his? Yeah. 
there, you can get there, go over this here. Now look, it's going over there. You know what I mean? And there was Elit up here. Round about there. So you could go that way to hers. Right? Along Forest Avenue, down here, onto 16th Street, round. And we're going to go down here and have a look. Okay? Let's just have a little kinky little look. Let's be newsy. Well, there's traffic lights there, so okay. Now we're going the wrong way, then. And see, always going the wrong way. Oh, look, another bridge. But this is in a more populated area. But look. Oh, wow. That's part of the river, which is part of the wider part of the river. From there. But there's another bridge they have to go over. Now, this would be fairly Quite on the evening, late at night, maybe. Possible, you know what I mean? Come along in your car, jump out, you've already got the weight on you, the weight on you, over it goes. This is all, <coughs> looks all like industrial, all gone crash. Right, this looks like industrial workplace there's a garage there uni mark now they would have cameras they would have cameras if they didn't i'd be very surprised the traffic light would have cameras surely the cameras let's see if we can get in to there see if we can see any cameras any cameras on these buildings any cameras? Anything? Is that a camera? Is that a camera there? Or is it just the edging of something? It might just be the edging. But that would have cameras somewhere. Let's have a look. This is the entrance to it. Oh, look. Look, look, look. Is that a camera? Is that a camera? See where I'm pointing? Is that a camera? No, if so, they would have film if it was working. Oh, what's that? Is that a camera? Is that a camera? I don't know. Pretty big for a camera, isn't it? But that's definitely a camera. That is definitely a camera and it's pointed to the door. You see what I mean? It's pointed to the door. But would it catch anything round here? Is it any cameras anywhere else? See, we can just got to look up high on the buildings. Up on the lights, anywhere. Is that a camera? Is that a camera? I wonder if that's a camera, because it's not lights.
No, oh, no, it's a straight line, isn't it? Yeah, because there's ever yeah, it's a straight line. But you see, we have cameras on all these. There's no way of getting anywhere in the UK without being caught on some camera. These are cameras on this building. And we know they have cameras on the lights, so there's got to be somewhere. If they've come this way or if she's come this way back and forth, they've got to have it on camera. Well, that is definitely a camera there. But is it point, does it point outwards? Does it point outwards or is it pointed at the door? Personally, if I owned it, if I was an owner of something like this, I'd have the cameras there, 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 round the sides, everywhere. I'll tap cameras up here, watching the pumps. So there's got to be some cameras. Oh, what's that? Oh, is that a camera? Or is that just some connection to a wire? Anyway, what I'm trying to prove is Along that route she took to get to his, either way, whichever way she went, whether she went the direct way, which I showed you on the map, or if she went the other way, right, and over that bridge, another bridge, right, and round, there's got to be some camera somewhere which would have caught her coming and leaving. And at what time she'd been coming into two rivers and what time she left two rivers. Um, let's just hang on. I don't want to go into that. I want to go through this. This is what I want to really go through. I've spent enough time on the maps. Enough time. And now we're going to go through the maps. Katrina B. Barra, height 5 foot 7, weight 110 pounds, eye colour brown, hair colour brown. I don't know my weight, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't go in pounds, we go in stones, like nine stone, whatever. I'm very lightweight. Right, Two Rivers Police Department, okay? The undersigned complaint being duly sworn states that the following complaint is true and correct. Count 1. Neglecting a child. Specified harm did not occur and a child under six years of age as a party to a crime. Pack PTAC. As a party to a crime. The above name defend I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight it. The above name defendant on or between February the twelfth, twenty twenty four to February the twentieth, twenty twenty four in the city of Two Rivers, Manitoba County, Wisconsin, as a party to a crime being a person responsible for the welfare of a victim child, date of birth 8, 2020, through her actions for reasons other than poverty, did negligently fail to provide necessary care so as to seriously endanger the physical, mental or emotional health of the child and the natural and probable consequences of this violation would be harm under 948.23 and all the rest. Although the harm did not actually occur and the child contrary to section 948.21, right? A class one 
felony. What was it? A class one felony. Okay. And upon conviction, may be fined not more than ten thousand dollars or in prison no more than three years and six months or both. Three years, she should get thirty, forty, fifty years. Obstructing count two, obstructing an officer. The above named defendant on or about Tuesday, February twentieth, twenty twenty four, in the river in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, did knowingly obstruct an officer while such officer was doing an act in an official capacity, and with lawful lawful authority obstructed officers contrary to section 946.41 a class a misdemeanor and upon conviction may be fined no more than ten thousand dollars or in prison not more than nine months so the max you can do is three years nine months on those two charges disgusting count three the above named defendant on or about Tuesday, February 20th, 2024, in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, did knowingly obstruct an officer while such officer was doing an act in an official capacity and with lawful authority obstructed officers contrary to section 946.41, a class I misdemeanor, and upon conviction may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison for nine months. So you're looking at like four years, no, four, four years, six months in total so far. So for those three counts, hang on. Count one, count two, count three. She's looking at like four months, four years, six months. I should throw the key away. And that's the maximum. She could get less. She could get. She could end up doing six months or, or, like, say, eighteen months. Right. Probable cause. The complainant alleges he formed by the reports of Megan Clumpian, known to complainant to be a detective with the Two Rivers Police Department and Detective Lieutenant Jacob Blazer of the Two Rivers Police Department that the incident occurred in the city of Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. Based on information provided by Detective Clumpian and Detective Lieutenant Blazer. 1. On the 2nd, the 20th, 2024, the Two Rivers Police Department, TRPD, uh, was notified by dispatch that Jesse Vang called 911 at 10.59, reporting that he was babysitting a three-year-old child. Three-year-old victim. Vang reported that while watching the child, he fell asleep. When he woke up, the child was missing. Don't fall asleep. Law enforcement responded to the Van residence at 3918 Michigan Road, apartment 102, in Two Rivers, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin, in an attempt to locate the victim. Law enforcement had been unsuccessful in locating victim as of February 26th. Right. Oh God, we've got so much to go through it. And hold on, what time is it now? Okay. We've got time. On the 2nd of the 20th, 2024, Detective M. Clumpio of the Two Rivers Police Department spoke with Frank at the residence at 3918 Mishcock Mich Road, apartment 102. Frank said he is in a relationship with the victim. Mother. 
คือชื่อไงตีตาหลอด stated that the victim had been staying with him recently Wang stated he had been trying to help Bama correct victims' bad behaviour. All together, t h i n g that one, two, three. He's three years old. Wang stated that he had been assisting with the care of victims for approximately one month, but not continuously. Hmm. Wang stated that on today's day, the second, the twentieth, twenty-four, twenty-four, he woke up with his autistic teenage son. I dread to feel, think how that autistic lad felt living with him. You know what I mean? Van helped his son. His son was getting on a bus at approximately seven thirty hours. Van stated, "Victim was asleep after he walked his son on out to the bus." So was his son getting the bus at seven thirty hours, or was he woke up at seven thirty and getting the bus at eight? Be a bit more precise. Fang stated that he woke the victim at approximately 0800 hours and brought him into the bedroom with him. Fang stated that he shut the door and Fang fell asleep. Fang Fang stated he woke up at approximately 1100 hours and found that the victim was dead. Fang said he then called 911 to report the victim missing. Yeah, you had plenty of time to. Get rid of any evidence, man. Right. On the second of the twentieth, twenty-four-four, Detective Lieutenant Glazer spoke with Barra. Barra stated that victim has been in the care of Jesse Bang for approximately one week. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry this little boy had to be in his presence for a week. I'm sorry that this little boy was not thought about. I'm sorry this little boy was not cared for. Barry resides in the Wisconsin Dells. Barry states she dropped off victim with Jesse Van on the second of the twelfth, twenty forty-four, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. She intended on victim coming back to Wisconsin Dells on Friday the second of the twenty-third, twenty-four. So you could say she was living in there literally for two weeks. Two weeks. On the second of twentieth, twenty twenty-four, DCI agent Neil Luffy, Luffy, or Luffy, Luffy, did speak with Katrina Brewer and denied that she was in the Manic Terrace County area on February sixteenth and seventeenth. Twenty-four, four. Liar! Ping, ping, ping! Your phone tells. Detective Clumpyank is aware that pursuant to search warrant, law enforcement did conduct forensic extraction of Jesse Bang and Katrina Bowers' cell phones after they were consequent consensually turned over to law enforcement. Based on analysis of these cell phones, specifically located, specifically location data obtained, that law enforcement obtained information that contradicted contradicted Katrina Barrett's statement that she had not been in the Manicouac area on the February sixteenth and seventeenth. Law enforcement located messages from Van to Barra at approximately 6:39 p.m. hours and 6:49 p.m. February 2017, 2024, where Van told Barra that he's angry that victim overfilled his diaper with poop and pee, and that Van gave victim a cold 
Chiara. Please, while he's in prison, son, can we have someone give him cold showers 24 hours a day? Please. Gave him a cold shower. Frank noted that the victim was clean. Well, he would be after having a shower. But scared. I'd be flipping scared of him. <sighs> Six. Detective Lieutenant Glazer spoke with Katrina Barra and she stated that Jesse Bank was the enforcer of rules in the relationship and that was the re reason for sending victim to stay with Bank. Did she choose to send him or was she told to send him? She discussed with him the limits. What were the limits? Because they obviously didn't involve giving him cold showers. Obviously, didn't involve not making him stand for three hours. Right? Hold on. Discuss the limit of what discipline she did not want used. Other than that, she is fine with whatever discipline Frank enforces. She gave examples of discipline, including praying saying he was sorry and going over four rules that victim is supposed to memorise. He's three years old. The only thing that child is going to memorise is when he's getting fed. That's the only thing the child remembers when they get fed. At no point did she admit she was in the city of two rivers between February the 12th 2024 and February 20th, 2024, or had any face-to-face -face contact with victim. She said she was to, she was discussing behaviour issues with Bank around Thanksgiving of 2023, and he said she needed to try harder to stop the behaviour. Barra stated that she stated she wanted Bank to teach, teach victim by her example how to be a man. So he's teaching your son how to be a man. A man does not do what he does. He doesn't. Any decent man on this planet does not do that. <sighs> she said the past week was the longest time victim had stayed with Bang without her being there. Detective Lieutenant Glass said while talk while talked about the past two, she admitted she had been in two rivers on February the sixteenth. She said she left the Wisconsin Dallas at around six or seven and arrived in two rivers late at night. Well, she she left about six or seven, seven, eight, nine. So she left at seven. She's gonna get there about mm, nine nine thirties because traffic would be pretty Lacks by then. You know what I mean? So she's going to get there about 9 30. But she's saying late at night. She saw victim on the cage, but he was tired. She said she felt she left early morning on February 17th. She was confronted about being in two rivers on a different day and she did not admit she was in two rivers on February 14th for a period of time and then went back home. On the 2nd of 2024, Rank consented to meet in law enforcement of TRPD and agreed to a consensual interview. But he didn't make him stand up for three hours. During the course of the interview, conducted by Detective Michael Herman of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office, Rank made consensual statements in regard to his recent interactions with victims. Bang states that the victim is afraid. Oh, yeah, he's afraid. What is, yeah. Then corrected himself and states that he respects me. Hold on, hold on. I've got a sign for us here. I've got a sign for us. Are we ready for this? All right. I'll get back up there. 
tháng ngày khi vào lịch chiều nay cô sẽ đi chỉ chỉ công chức chỉ bảo chỉ khách chỉ mời cô hề ở đây mang cho anh chị xem sau khi tại phần my consensual statement in phần mấy cái gói chỉ về research interaction with victim phần state that victim is afraid to be then corrected himself and states that he respects me how no he doesn't respect you he stated that they put victim here as a punishment for his bad behavior what bad behavior what was this three-year-old doing so bad for him to have to stay with this vile creature what was he doing they were trying to teach him how to be good here and good at home Bang indicated that he's trying to make him understand that going home is like a privilege. Home is supposed to be a safe place. Home is somewhere you can be yourself. It's not a privilege. Bang <sighs> stated that the victim was disciplined using timeouts. He described the timeouts as being standing for periods of time. One to three minutes, I'd expect, at the most, from one to three hours. I think he made him stand a lot longer than three hours. During this time, victim was required to pray or say, I'm sorry, mommy. What was he sorry for? What was this three-year-old supposed to be sorry for? For being born to a mother like that. I'm sorry for the little boy that he had a mother like that. I'm sorry he ever came into contact with this foul creature. A dog, a cat, a wolf, a bear will treat their, their cubs and their pups better than what this mother treated her son. Vank reported that the victim was in time out for the majority of his time with Vank. Yeah, because if he did something, you'd, you'd extend it. Right, there, there's an over hour, keep standing. You know what I mean? Vank was unable to specify bad behaviours which was. See, he didn't even know what he was uh, punishing, putting him in time out for. He couldn't even give an example of why he was putting the boy in time out. What had he done? Had he spoke to you out of place? Did he look at you the wrong way? Or did his knee just wobble? <sighs> Fang advised that he changed victim diaper at least one per day. That poor child, nappy rash. Did no one even try teaching him to use the potty? You know what I mean? On the evening of the 2nd, 1924, Fang changed victim's diet prior to him going to bed at approximately 8 to 9 pm. Well, that's a lie. He probably did change the diaper, but he didn't go to bed. Because then he goes on to say he then watched Ready Player One. Right? He stated that victim was not watching the movie as Frank put him in punishment. What was he in punishment for? I suppose to, I thought he was going to bed. What was he in punishment for? Giving you a dirty nappy and you having to clean him? Oh dear. He's three years old. He then, well, he stated that the victim was standing in the corner or standing by the bed by him. Bang stated you get pretty tired from, I guess like from standing too. Yes, he would be tired from standing. <sighs> he explained he does not want to be mean to him, but he's trying to teach him to be more respectful. No, 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 how no. There's other ways to be teach a child to be respectful. 
other ways. He was asked about February 19, 2024, if he made the victim's dance, to which he replied, ah, uh, yeah, for probably like two to three hours. Van confirmed again that the victim's dance for two to three hours without sitting. In the event that the victim tries to sit down, Van will say, you want cold water? He then indicated, he's fine. It's not like his knees are shaking. And about to fall over, you know. I don't give two fucking hoots. That is a load of BS. A load. A, a lot more went on. A lot more went on with the discipline. A lot more. Right, how much more have you got to eat? Oh, not much more. Right. Number nine. On the morning of the 2nd, the 20th, 2024, Frank woke up approximately 7.30 hours and prepared his son for school. At that time, he saw victim sleeping on the futon sofa in the living room. Yes, he's probably too scared to flip and move in case you put him in time out. I'll just lie here, big wire. Don't move. Frank took his son to the bus stop and locked the apartment door. Upon returning to the apartment, Van found victim still sleeping on the sofa. He worked victim and then they ate breakfast. He reported that the victim ate some cereal, which had frosting on one side and wheat on the other, without milk. Hmm. Milk. Three-year-olds need milk. It helps keep the bone, uh, make the, keep the bone strong. They need milk. They went to Vang's bedroom where victim was told to stand and pray near the foot of the bed, foot of Vang's bed. He don't, did not change the victim's diaper. So this child had been in this diaper since 8 o'clock the following the previous night, right? Uh, he did not change the victim's diaper as he was too tired. What the hell, man? You're too tired. Victim was not allowed to do fun things. No, he wasn't allowed to be a child. He was in time out. When asked about any toys at the apartment, Van reported that there was there was one toy which he received at Christmas time. One toy. This poor child had one toy. This toy was similar to a toolbox. However, he was not allowed to play with it during the week of the 2nd of 12th, 2024, to the 2nd of 20th, 2024, as he was in time out. When asked what happens if the time out do, out do not work with victims, that Fang stated he would give him an ultimatum. Fang recalled that the ultimatum was usually do you want some cold water? Meaning, you'll have the cold shower. If Van reported that the victim did not like cold water, no, he wouldn't. I don't like cold water on my body. But did not know why. You didn't know why the boy didn't like cold water. Are you too fucking thick? Is it that... Oh, I can't say what I want to say because otherwise I wouldn't be able to publish this. He stated the victim was still bottle fed. Well, I must admit, at three, it shouldn't be on bottle. It should have been on like a beaker, a juice beaker or something like that. It should have been. Now, that's the mother's fault. That's laziness. That's laziness by the mother. Right? The mother should have been potty training him. The mother should have been getting him off the bowl. That's the mother's fault. Um, when asked about what victim ate while he was with Bang, he stated pizza, noodles, cereal and similar items. Junk food. 
junk food. The state is that the victim is still bottle fed and is trying to get into it regular food. Okay. Fair enough. He's trying to get into it proper food. But what about the vegetables? You know what I mean? What about some veggies? Don't believe families believe in giving their children veggies no more. You can buy them frozen, pop, pop them in some water, pop them in a microwave. Two minutes later, there's the veggies. Christ's sake. He was unable to pro provide specific details as to the food. While Van was sleeping, he would lock the door to the apartment at the doorknob, deadbolt, and with a security chain attached at the top of the door to keep victim from walking out of the apartment. Well, that isn't the only reason he did that. He did that because he was dealing. I think he was dealing drugs. I think he had drugs in that apartment. Right. He was part of a, a blood gang. Right. They dealt with D-R-U-G-S. They dealt with prostitution. They dealt with... Um, Oh, God, what's that word I'm looking for? Trafficking. They always had to be on their guard because their doors could get kicked in by other gangs. You know what I mean? They had to be on their guard. So that wasn't the reason he locked his door to keep the child in. It's the reason to keep people in. All right. Frank reported that on the evening prior to victim going missing, he had consumed three 12-ounce Budweiser beers and one cyclobenzaprine as a sleep aid. Yes, but you got up at 7.30, you got your autistic son ready for school, you walked him to the bus stop, you come home, you locked the door. You're telling me you didn't double lock that door and everything else? Yes, you did, because you come home. You woke the three-year-old up. You gave him breakfast. You then thought, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. you telling me when you walk through that door, you didn't double lock it. B.S. That doesn't mean nothing. So he's trying to say that by having the three beers and the cy cyclobenzapine, he probably forgot to lock the door. No. A guy like Vang will not forget to lock his door. He can't afford to. As I said, he's part of a group of gangs, right? His door can be kicked in by other gang members any time. So, that doesn't wash with me. I'm on medication. That makes me sleepy. But I get up at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning when I have my grandkids. And I'm awake. I may not be fully awake, but I'm awake. And by the time I've done their breakfast, sat down and had a cup of coffee, I'm awake. So within 20 minutes of me getting up, I'm awake. You don't get a chance to fall asleep. You don't. Because the kids, the little ones are there, they're there. You hear the voices saying, you've got to feed them, you've got to clean up after them. Everything. So while they're having their breakfast, my breakfast is normally a mug of coffee. Give me my coffee. That's my breakfast. Right? So while they're having their breakfast, I'm having my mug of coffee. That wakes me up. Truly wakes me way up. And then they get they go up for a while. They come back. By that time I've cleaned up. I've cleaned the plates up. They come back. My grandson will probably want a bath. So we go and put a bath on for him. My granddaughter, we go and wash her hands and face, do her teeth. I've got their own little tough brushes here. We do the teeth, come out, and I'll leave her put. Well, before even doing her breakfast, I'll tell you know, she don't wear pull ups no more when she goes to bed. No, she don't. She's three years old. Right? She'll maybe ask me for a pull up if she wants to poop. But she's only three and she's still learning. But she does use the toilet for everything else. Right? We just gotta get her used to going 
and you're in a poo on the toilet or on the putty. The putty is there. If she wants to use the putty, she can use the putty. If she wants to use the toilet, she can use the toilet. So we do all those little things. All the normal multi morning routine things. Then we get dressed. And then we might go out to the park somewhere. If we're going to the park, I prepare a packed lunch. Because we're going to be there at lunchtime. So I prepare packed lunches. We go to the far park. Or we go to the park and then depending like this weekend, I'm on about take I'm thinking about taking my son to the the calf, which he likes to go to and get some lunch from. You know what I mean? We go out, so we get all boss dressed and everything. Then we go out. I do not have time to fall asleep. By ten o'clock, when it's time to take my medication again, I'm I'm in bed. My grandson is in bed. My granddaughter, if I've got my granddaughter, she's been in bed since seven thirty, maybe sometimes earlier if she's falling asleep. You know what I mean? But they're in bed, they're asleep. I go to bed, I'm out for the count till the next morning. Unless my grandson pushes me and I'm on the edge of the bed and I'm on the verge of falling out of the bed. Because sometimes he'll come asleep in with me, sometimes he sleeps in with his sister. I'm going, I've woke up my morning and thought, where's Ellis gone? And I've gone in and he's in, his, in the bedroom. Sleeping in the bottom bunk with his sister. So it's so cute when he does that. But it doesn't go anywhere else. But as I said, you don't get a chance in an, in the day to fall asleep. If you can't stay awake, then you should not be looking after children, a child or anyone. You're vile. Now, I don't know what these are. I don't know if these are previous charges. Uh -oh. O seven thirteen twenty eleven DC eleven CM nine nine three Winnie Bago, the tenth of twenty first twenty sixteen DC weapon. I think now the charges she's had. 15 cm 648 at Otagami 925 2017 OAR 17 CT 236 at Garmin 508 CT 752 at Approved by complaint for filing. Right. Now, who thinks that's correct? Or who thinks it's that? It's a hell no from me. Right? Oh, that will get me down. It's a hell no from me. That. What he says and what she says is a load of BS. Yes, they're correct. He, and we was all correct. We all knew that that little boy had been there longer than from longer. Right? But to send him there to be a man. <sighs> I'm speechless. I, I would say to my son when he was six, say 18, 19, man up. He's 18, 19 by then. Man up. You know what I mean? But a three year old, a three year old is a child, is a baby. You need to be teaching him by now. He needs to be off the bottle, onto a beaker. He should have been at least. Party trained by the age of three, but that's the mother. Now, what I want to know was if she was struggling, did she have child welfare services helping her? 
Was she on their books? And if so, did they not question where her son was for two, like a week and a half, two weeks? Was she on the books for social child welfare services or DCFS or whatever it is called over there? I won't tell you what we call ours over here because they have a bunch of uh, I don't trust them with my little finger. I don't trust them. I don't trust the services over here because they don't care. Anyway, I'm not going into that. But I'd like to know if they, if she was getting help and support from welfare services. So, let's have a look at this one. This, this one is just the same. So we can quickly go through it. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, here it is. Yes, yeah, told you, I've got them. I've got them. Right, now it says the same. Count one, neglecting a child specified time did not occur and child under six years of age as a part to a crime. That is all the same, right? Uh, it's a felony, class one felony, and your punk conviction may be fine. No more than. $10,000 on prison for no more than three years. Three years and six months, or both. Right. Probable cause. So he's only got that one count, but she's got three counts against her. I think more charges will be coming for him. And I think their DA has got to be back at a backbone, strong enough to take this to court, even without a body. And I think they should be charged with some sort of unaliving. If they don't find this boy very soon, I don't want this to be coming about harming in Montgomery case where the child is never found, uh, Orson and what was that other little boy, those two little boys who've never been found. I don't want this to be that case where two years later they probably arrest them mm. for it. You know what I mean? I don't want that to happen. I want them arrested this year. It's like Summer Moon, Utah Wells. She's been missing two and a half years. No one's been arrested. No one's been charged. Now, I think that's disgusting. I don't think they should go out, okay? I think the DAs need to have a stronger backbone and say, well, this child has not been found. There's no signs of this child being found. There's nothing whatsoever. Not in a shoe, a top, nothing. And I think there's enough evidence to show that something happened because of the lies the parents said. But I think DIs need to have a big, a stronger backbone and say, well, we take this to court. You know what I mean? We'll charge them. So, so that's his code. So, easy to say, spoke with Anne at the resident. Said he was in a relationship with the victim's mother for training a big boy. State that the victim has been staying with him recently, assisting with the care of the victim approximately one month, but not continuously. So it's all the same as what I've just read out with her. Detective Clumpian is aware that pursuant to search warrants, law enforcement did conduct forensic extractions of Jesse Vine and Trina Barry's cell phone 
after they were consensually turned over to law enforcement. Right? It's all the same. I've read it all out. So it's all the same. What they've got in hers is what they've taken here. Van consented to meet with law enforcement at TRPD and agreed to a consensual interview. During the course of the interview, right? So, hold on, my dog. Hold on, be right back. Hold on. I'm back. It showed up on my phone that someone was at my door. I was expecting a delivery and it just showed up on my phone that someone was at my door. That's how it's so handy. Anyway, so it's... A... Hang on. Uh... Oh, yeah, this bit is a bit different. Right? Oh, did I read that bit out? Can't remember. The victim is not potty trained and that is still wearing diapers. Band advised that he trains the victim diapers at least, at least once per day. One nappy change a day. On the evening of the 2nd, 1924, Bang changed. The victim's diaper prior to him going to bed at approximately eight or nine. But then, what gets me, he says he changed his diaper before, going to, before, before the little boy went to bed. But then, put him in time out. Because he says he was watching Ready Player One, states that the victim was not watching the movie, it was bang, put him in punishment, which was time out. He stated that the victim will stand in the corner or stand by the bed by me, Van stated. He gets pretty tired from, I guess, like standing too. You know what I mean? So he changed his diaper, but then, as I said, to go to bed at approximately eight or nine, but then put him in time out. Why? Why? What has that little boy done? To be standing there for two to three hours. And that's a bit here. Here, here. Van reported that the victim did not like cold water, but did not know why. Because it's too, too effing thick. You know what I mean? Anyone would know. Could say, well, yeah, he didn't like cold water. But then again, no one loves cold water. You know what I mean? So, it's just so... And it said there, this is what gets me as well. Why? This bit here. While Van was sleeping, he would lock the door to the apartment at the doorknob, deadbolt, and with a security chain at the top of the door. That wasn't to keep little Elijah in. That was to keep 
certain people liked as well. You know what I mean? He had, he's a, a gang member, a blue. So, uh, but he's trying to say that like, because he had three and 12 ounce good boys, bees, and one sleeper egg, right? That he probably didn't, he probably didn't put the door chain on and all that lot on when after he took his son to school. It's just a load of BS. He's done a lot more than what he's saying. And that's why we can't find the body. They can't afford for the body to be found. Because the body will tell the story. This little boy's body will tell the story of what happened. And they can't afford for him to be found. And that's what gets me so, so mad. It's been so, so mad to hear that he made, made him stand for one, to, he didn't make him stand for one hour, he made him stand for three hours plus. It's fine. It's fine. It's not like his knees are shaking and about to fall over, you know. <clears throat> was that how you was brought up, man? Was it? Was it? Did your parents make you stand for three hours? I can, I agree with him. It should not be on bottles. It should have been on more solid food, right? And okay, he did it by giving him what he did, he's doing it. He didn't he gave him what he had in his cupboard or freezer. You know what I mean? But even so, that's the mother's fault. It's the mother's fault for not having him potty trained. It's the mother's fault for not having him on solids. But he's at fault for the discipline. And that is what I believe is a cause of his demise. Look at this. These are his charges. Oh no. Let's see if we can get highlighted. Right. 10-24-2002. PCC crime damage to property 01 CM 2404. Out of Garmin, I don't know what that means. 07 03 to 2002. Fleeing officer 02 CF 50 Mark 55 Manitoba. The 7th of 3rd 2022. Battery in prison. Seeds 02 CF. 165 Manitoba. 10 the 3rd, 2022. Big red flag there. Big red flag coming up. Child abuse. Intentionally caused harm. 02 CF 254. The 1st, 21st, 2005. MFG slash Dow cocaine. 04 CF 410. Winnie Baker. The 7th of the 23rd, 2004. Pause cocaine. 404 CM 651. The 4th of the 7th, 2006. Pause cocaine. 06 CF 502. The 10th, the 19th, 2009. Foul, foul, foul bail jump. Felony bail jump. I'll be sure, 07 CF 789, and this one, they're putting up, I think they didn't, I, I think they forgot to put this one in, because it's after, 0723 2007, 
DC 07 CM 435 Mantua. But look, this one. That is criminal record so far. And she leaves him knowing that is intentionally caused harm. A CA charge on him. Hmm. And as I said, all those locks on his door wasn't to keep little Elijah in. It was because of all this. Because of this. Hold on. Because of that, because of the, the drugs, the cocaine. He probably had all that in his property. He's had to get rid of all of that before he phoned the police. You know what I mean? He can't have nothing in his property to show there was drugs in there. Before the police come, nothing could be in there. Um, but that's it as I said it's literally word for word the same apart well even this is word for word the same as her first charge but it's just that she's got two more charges on top so the most she's looking at is like four years six months something like that he's looking at maybe um Prison, no more, not more than three years and six months. So, that was the past six months. And, oh. She's looking at possible five years altogether with the discharge and the two other charges on top. That's the most. But I hope to God they've come out with some more charges. Because I don't think that can. Two rivers will be happy to know that he's out. He could be out in what a year. She could be out in three, four years, if not much less. But I do know they do put charges, charge people with certain things, so that they know where they are. They're there for questioning. On other, on other charges, you know what I mean? That way they can't jump bail, they can't run. So, but it's just heart wrenching. This little boy. This little boy has not been uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, I just tried to see if I could find the number again, but anyone watching this on replay the number is on that first video i showed the police press conference to if you've got any information the rewards you now fifteen thousand dollars right so please if anyone share this Get this out there. Get this information about this little boy out there online. We need to highlight this case more. So please share it. Please leave a comment. Give it a like. Because if you're giving this video on YouTube a like, it helps with the analytics. 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 Oh, whatever. I can't say. It helps. And pushes that this video out more 
YouTube will push it out more so that that way more people will see it. So you just have to get this video out as well. So share it, give it a like, leave me a comment. And if you like what you see, subscribe. It costs you nothing. All of that will cost you nothing to do. It just helps get the videos out there. I'm here doing this to get the word out there on these missing children. This is what I, I want to do, is to get the word out there for the missing children. Because they have no voice. We are their voices. And the only way we can get our voices out there, because I'm from the UK, I'm not from the USA, I'm from the UK. You can tell by my accent I'm from the UK. Right? So, um, the only way we can help over here to get these videos out there and for people to see them, to watch them, to listen to them, to read through the documents as I'm reading through them. Maybe turn the sound off, just read the documents, see what it says yourself. And you'll be giving a how no to that. Because no one believes him. A lot more happened to this little boy, and I am so, so sorry for him. That he wasn't able to be that little three-year-old boy. I'm still trying to get that, big, that picture of him at the garage. And I saw it the other day, and he looked so scared. So, so scared. Anyway, as I said, I am back here later. And, um, but this, that is on Audrey Cunningham. Okay, so I'll see you all later. And please, give me a like, give, share it, comment, subscribe. Every little action you do for this video helps this little boy. That's all I'm here for is to get these children out there and in the public eye. So thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me. And I'll see you all later.